It's real, real easy to get caught up in the hype of Tesla watching that stock price soar and hear about how they're increasing deliveries by 50% every single year. In 2020, they're on track to deliver well over half a million vehicles, and that's just Tesla. So once more and more companies start getting into the EV space, it's very easy to assume electric cars are taking over and you're basically stupid to ever consider buying a gas car. But the facts don't lie, and some of the not-so-fun facts are that EVs are still a very, very small portion of car sales. I've seen it brought up in the comments on these videos before, and I'm not trying to deny logic in reality, but those are the hard truths. In 2018, EVs made up a little bit more than 2% of universal car sales in the world. And if you look at the total of vehicles sold in 2019, they were nearing around 77 million, which is actually down. So the number of people buying cars year over year has decreased a little bit. And while EVs are definitely on the rise, I do believe they are the future. I think that it's important to remain realistic about how long it's going to take until we get to a point where electric vehicles are the dominant vehicle on the road. So in this video's title, I say take over. What do I mean by that? In my opinion, it means that they're the standard. They're what most people are buying. And I do think this is going to take decades to get to that point. We are by no means in a world where everyone going out buying new cars is buying electric ones. I find that kind of sad. I feel like anybody buying a new car, especially one that's over $35,000, should make sure it's electric so that they have cost savings, environmental benefits, and understand where the world is heading on a technological level. But that's not how the world works. A lot of people have doubts and fears about electric cars, and as I've mentioned, Tesla's biggest threat is tradition, and people don't like that idea that they're gonna have to change the way they do something. They're very comfortable with what they're doing now. They don't want to mess that up. They're comfortable with gas stations, and for whatever reason, they're not interested in switching at all. Several countries in Europe have passed legislation saying that by 2035, or for some countries 2040, the sale of gas cars, anything with an internal combustion engine doesn't count if it's a hybrid, will be banned from sale. That does not take away the second-hand market, however, where a lot of vehicles are bought and sold. People that aren't going to a dealership to buy a vehicle, which means that, yeah, even if by 2035 these countries keep their promise and say, okay, if you're a company that's producing vehicles and you want to keep selling cars, they cannot be running on gas. They cannot have an internal combustion engine. They have to be moved on to batteries and electric powertrains. There would still be a a fairly large secondhand market of people selling used and old gas vehicles. They're just not producing any new ones, okay? And that's like 15 to 20 years away from today. If we're just looking at the stats of how many cars are sold each year, Elon on the Joe Rogan podcast also talked about cars. He didn't just smoke weed like a lot of people think. He brought up a very sad statistic that I think more people should know about, which is that if the governments of all over the world just all agreed to ban the sale of all gas cars right now, right this second in 2020, they said, you you know what? If you're manufacturing a gas engine, I don't care if it's a hybrid. I don't care if you need maintenance vehicles. I don't care if you need semi trucks. You're not allowed to sell any more gas cars. Okay? They just put their foot down today. Not saying this is likely. In fact, this is impossible. But two things would happen if we ban the sale of all gas cars right now. For one, Tesla would probably do pretty well because they're kind of leading that industry. So they would essentially become the only company selling decent cars to people. But for two, it would still take around 25 years years before we had eliminated most gas vehicles from the road because that's typically how long a gas car can last before it breaks down to the point that people don't even want to keep maintaining it anymore. 25 years it would still take before we had gotten rid of gas cars entirely and now pretty much everything on the road is electric. There may be a few hobbyists out there that are still rocking gas vehicles in 25 years but it would definitely be a rare occurrence. It would not be the norm and that's only if the current amount of car sales that are happening continued which likely wouldn't happen if we had to all switch over to electric right now. I do think there's going to be a little bit of exponential growth. We're in the very, very early stages where, you know, you see 2 or 3% of cars sold being electric, but in time, I do think it will increase fairly rapidly because there's going to be a tipping point where electric cars are going to be getting cheaper and cheaper. They're going to be getting better range. A lot of this, of course, I think it's going to be because of Tesla, but other companies like Ford are entering the EV market, and I'm sure everyone else is going to catch up eventually. So we get to the point where anyone buying a new car is going to have to to choose an electric one unless they just really really prefer gasoline but it's going to become dumber and dumber right now i still think it's kind of dumb if you're spending that much money on a car to not go electric but i'm just one tiny piece of the market right now once we get to that point where all of the younger generations that are spending a lot of time on youtube and think teslas or electric cars in general are really really cool they're all gonna grow up and say yeah of course i want my next car to be an electric one we'll see that growth steadily increase to a point where at some point i think in the next 100 years we're gonna see a 
tipping point where it's going to make less and less sense to buy a gas car new. I think there's going to be a fairly large chunk of time where gas cars are still going to be purchased, but it'll be in the used category. And the ultimate dilemma, which we're kind of experiencing right now, is if you want a new car, you might as well go electric because new cars are going to cost more and electric is a lot cheaper to maintain. And if you can't afford that upfront cost of an electric vehicle, then you can get a really, really, really cheap gas car that's going to cost a lot to maintain. You gotta be filling it up with gas and you gotta be changing the oil and the brake pads. Things that you don't have to maintain that much with electric vehicles. So there will be a good couple of decades, I think, where people are still buying gas cars, but they're really, really cheap. They're not really in the new category. And any car someone purchases that's over 20K is pretty much going to be electric. But then you have a new problem that I think will cause gas cars to fall off the deep end with sales fairly quickly, which is when the infrastructure we have for them right now starts to break apart due to lack of demand. Right now, we have a very established infrastructure for gas cars, okay? We have whole businesses that run off of smog checks. We have whole businesses that run off of car maintenance when it comes to internal combustion engines. A lot of these guys I don't think are going to just instantly switch over to working on electric cars. It's a completely different skill set, and a lot of them may lose their jobs in the process. There's whole businesses that just thrive on changing oil. That's all going to go away in time once more and more companies start adopting electric, especially once you have more brands buying electric semi-trucks so they don't even need gas to fill up anymore. There are a ton of businesses in the gas station sector, of course, but once you have less and less cars filling up with gas, there's not going to be much incentives for those stations to stay open or continue to selling gas. They'll be restricted to just selling, you know, Funyuns, and you could walk in there and pick up some snacks, but it's just going to become too expensive for them to keep selling gas because there's not going to be enough demand for it. So once those companies start sealing off their gas tanks and say, you know what, we can't sell gas anymore because there's just not enough people doing it, that causes a snowball effect because once those gas stations start closing, now it makes even less sense to keep driving a gas car because you're like, well, these shops that used to service them and stuff, they're closing left and right. There's less and less people servicing this thing, less and less people doing oil changes and less and less gas stations open. Now it's going to become even more inconvenient for you to cheap out and buy a used gas car. Keep in mind though, I don't think this stage of the, our conversion to sustainable energy is in the next couple decades. I'm talking about 2070, 2080 probably, because like I said, it would still take 25 years to get people completely switched over to electric, even if we ban the sale of gas cars today, but that's not happening. Even best case scenarios, you know, the United States of America has still not passed legislation that says we're gonna ban the sale of gas cars by this time. I think it's a lot easier for a lot of countries in Europe that have much smaller populations and a smaller amount of car sales each year, whereas in America, there is a huge population that buys new cars all the time, and that means for the next 15, 20, 25, 30 years, there's still probably going to be a lot of ICE cars that are built and sold brand new due to people not wanting to change from their tradition, from what they're used to, you know, range anxiety or brand loyalty, any number of things that will keep people switching from electric. And then on top of that, it's going to take another 20 to 30 years to where all these brand new gas cars that are going to be made in the future are breaking down and no longer being serviced and you can't even find one anymore. So a lot of fairly successful brands are acknowledging that electric is the future and they need to make their lineups adapt to that future as soon as possible. Ford's pushing it with the Mach-E. They've teased their F-150 electric pickup truck. Tesla is of course changing the game by showing what electric cars are capable of and that they can beat social stigmas. But yeah, this entire process of getting to the point where electric cars are the dominant vehicle on the road, no longer gas, it's easily going to take 50 to 60 years, which means that, hey, I'll probably see it in my lifetime, which is really exciting. Sadly, maybe some of my viewers won't but uh, that got dark really quick. Let's not bring that up. It's gonna take a while, and I hope people can remain realistic about it. This is an electric revolution. It's coming, it's moving fast, and we pretty much can't stop it with how much demand Tesla has right now, but it's not something that just happens overnight. In fact, quite the opposite. It's going to take decades and decades before electric is just the norm, and gas cars are looked at as old dated technology, and why do I have to put a liquid into this vehicle? But I also think it's worth mentioning there's a lot of infrastructure that has to adapt for electric, vehicles as well. Tons of superchargers and electric vehicle charge points have to be put in across the globe over these decades, as well as figuring out a way for our power plants and our grid to sustain enough energy for that inevitable future where everyone's charging their vehicle from home. That means that every single house on the grid right now is going to use far more power than what we're currently consuming. A lot of people think this is the reason electric cars will never be the future, but I think those power demands can be met thanks to a lot of revolutions when it comes to solar technology and also 
restructuring when it comes to power efficiency generated by power plants. I personally hope that our governments can look into more safe ways of generating nuclear power so that we can meet the demand of every single person charging a vehicle from their house. Again, it's not going to happen overnight, but eventually I do think that we'll be able to beef up our grid, get to the point where lots and lots of houses have their own battery packs and solar panels on them, so that can help offset the energy usage from the grid, but I get it. Solar doesn't work for every house in every location, not to mention there's lots of you out there with apartments, and I think those will adopt in time soon, where eventually we'll get to a point where pretty much anywhere that a car is parked for a long period of time, it's expected that there's going to be a charge plug nearby so that even those of you with apartments can charge despite not having a garage and that kind of thing. So be realistic about this electric overtake. It's going to take time, it's going to be slow, and a lot of people are just going to resist it at every chance they can. Gas cars are going to be around and it'll be a long, long time before you look at a gas car on the road as kind of a rare sighting. Let me know if you think I'm being unrealistic with my expectations or you think the electric future is going to switch over a lot, lot faster or slower than I think by hitting me up in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have an excellent day. Take care.